So, uh, welcome uh, to the dialogues of the of the DEC project of this Erasmus Plus program. Uh, today, uh, how the dialogues will work. Uh, for example, today now, uh, the representatives from Equipo Europa will present their association, their youth association. And uh, later, uh, we, we can ask some questions, whatever you want to learn about, about the youth organizations environment and for Equipo Europa specifically. Uh, you are more than encouraged to, to ask questions and uh, participate in this dialogue uh, as actively as you want and you can. So we have together uh, with us uh, Ruben Cavero, who is uh, vice speaker of uh, Equipo Europa, and uh, Yocandra Martinez, who is uh, environmental manager, if I'm not mistaken, in Equipo Europa. And we have to uh, we have with us uh, Carmen Carmen Coletto from Fibcar, who is partner, you know, in this program. Carmen, would you like to say something? Yes, I think that most of the people already know me. But well, my name is Carmen. Uh, I'm uh, I work uh, at Fibcar as a project assistant, and I'm managing this project with Arquinos and ITNet. Um, so I, uh, I don't think we, we can have a discussion later. I really want to hear our guests. Uh, so uh, Ruben or Yokandra, whoever wants to go first, we're good to start. Yeah, thank you, everybody. I'm going to, to share the screen. Oh. Okay, yeah. So um, uh, I'm Ruben, as, as Arquinos has said, I'm the vice speaker in Equipo Europa Madrid. Um, this is Yokandra. She's more focused on uh, WAPET. It's a project we're going to talk uh, later, but she's also uh, in charge of some uh, environmental uh, um, projects in, in Equipo Europa. So, um, yeah, uh, Equipo Europa was born, let's say, in uh, 2019 in the European elections um, with the campaign this time vote, um, because basically uh, it what it tried to encourage all the all the youth, Spanish youth, to participate in the election. But because, as we know, uh, the abstentionism between the, the youth in these kind of elections in general, of course, but mainly in the youth is is quite high. So they were trying it, it was just a group of young, uh, young volunteers. They were they were friends who joined uh, because they liked uh, the, um, the European Union, the European values, and they were concerned about what the European Union could do uh, for for the youth. Um, so as it was such a success, it was such a collaboration with the European uh, Parliament Office in, in Spain, and because it was such a success, they decided to to fund a, a, um, a association instead of just a uh, movement. Uh, so that's that's how uh, Keep Europa uh, was born. Then uh, this is our values, basically Europeanism. Uh, of course, uh, our main objective is to bring uh, European Union and European projects and what you uh, what Europe can offer to to youth to um, uh, uh, to the young people, uh, because we uh, we believe that there's not enough knowledge uh, of what the European Union can do, can do for for us. And then, of course, it's uh, mainly focused on on youth. That's why we also talk about uh, about housing, about uh, uh, unpaid internships, and about uh, all kind of um, issues that uh, that are important for for youth, not only in Spain or European Union, but everywhere. Um, also, we want to uh, to enhance the, the youth participation in the decision making processes. Not not just as a uh, also like as, as a stakeholder as a main voice in all these kind of projects and all these kind of uh, public policies in all kind of levels. Then uh, we are uh, non-partisanism. 
it, this doesn't mean that we don't talk with, with political parties. Of course, we talk with them because of the decision making processes, but we try to be as uh, non biased as possible. We try to talk with every political party that uh, we, we know that we can that we can make uh, some contacts with and we can uh, enhance our voice in, uh, in participation. And then, of course, as my, my colleague is going to, to talk about some projects, uh, sustainability, because we believe that that's right now one of the, the, the pillars of, of youth and our, our uh, generation in the European Union. Uh, then, of course, human rights. Um, uh, we advocate for uh, human rights, how the European Union uh, sees human rights and, the, and its values. And, of course, uh, participation. That's why, as we're going to talk later, uh, Equipo Europa has... Uh, has created a lot of projects and a lot of different spaces on uh, where uh, the youth can, can participate. Then um, our goals are uh, bringing the European Union closer to young people, uh, as, as I said before. Uh, then the promoting uh, youth political participation in all levels. Uh, that's why, as, as I mentioned to talk later, we are distributed in different regions and, and uh, throughout the, um, the, the whole country. And, and then uh, we advocate for European youth policies. Uh, so um, what we want is to make an impact. Uh, we want to, to to bring our voices to the to the to the policymakers. Um, then uh, also it was the, the main objective. It was to bring uh, not just this group group of friends that start all this movement, but also uh, to create a whole network uh, in Spain. That's why uh, we make uh, we make conferences, uh, national conferences. We make courses, and we make some uh, some projects that uh, it's not just in one region, but we try to connect and we try we try to 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 make a national movement instead of just in Madrid, for example. Uh, then uh, we are right now we are approximately uh, three thousand eight hundred fifty members in in all delegations. We work as, as in Spain as auto autonomous communities. That's why uh, I'm, for example, from Equipo Europa Madrid. There's a national a national board, and then uh, each almost each region has one one board. That of course, it, depending of the the um, how big is the region and the, the amount of university it has, then the, the delegation would be larger or not. Um, but then, like for example, the the, the strongest one is uh, Madrid, uh, Catalonia, Basque Country, Navarra, uh, Andalusia. Um, and the good thing is that we collaborate among among us. Uh, we have common projects and common ideas, and we are uh, we are in touch with with every of them. Um, then I'm going to uh, to leave my my colleague to to speak more uh, about this project. Uh, well, hello, uh, my name is Yokandra, and well, as my colleague has said, I'm also part of this youth organization, but I'm more in the sustainability area. I'm right now, I'm the managing director of A Tree for Europe, which is one of our most famous campaigns, and I'm pretty sure this was our first campaign regarding sustainability. I like to um, start a little bit with the origin of the campaign which uh, I think was about three or four years ago when um, the president of the European Parliament, David Sassoli, uh, tweet, um, sorry, uh, uh, okay. So, um, okay, yeah. It was inspired by a proposal of the um, European Parliament president, David Sassoli, in which he, in, in a tweet where he uh, reached to every mayor across Europe to plant a tree uh, to fight against deforestation, because I think around this time happened like the, one of the wildfires that destroyed the Amazons or that really affected the Amazon. So he uh, reached to every uh, mayor across Europe uh, to plant a tree in their town. So in Equipo Europa, knowing that probably uh, plenty of mayors in Spain uh, couldn't know about this um, tweet, uh, we created this campaign to try to get them to plant a tree, well, at least a tree in their regions. And given that we try to be this bridge between the European Union, the, um, the youth, uh, the young people and the local areas, we designed this campaign. And
And uh, we work in Spain, but uh, in 2021, we extended the campaign to all of Europe. And uh, some of our ambassadors, uh, when they were in Erasmus, uh, they uh, contact with their regions and they also get those measures to plant a tree. And we have, uh, I think we have plant trees in regions or in cities such as Venice. And uh, right now in Spain, there are over 700 municipalities that are part of the campaign. And we have planted around 50,000 trees that are part of uh, one of the stra strategies of the European Green Deal, the bio uh, bi di biodiversity, uh, which you know the commission wants to plant about 3 million uh, trees in Europe to fight uh, deforestation. Uh, however, this is not our only uh, initiative regarding sustainability because uh, this past November we launched uh, Europa Sostenible, which is the area of sustainability in Equipo Europa, and we have different activities. Uh, one of our the most important activities is um, the reports that we have a group of researchers that uh, they try to make the European Green Deal accessible for everyone so they can understand everything that the European Commission is trying to do regarding sustainability. And this is pretty much how we work in sustainability and everything we do regarding um, a sustainable develop development. And then we, we started a project cost, uh, called uh, Europe in the Classroom that um, it, was, uh, it was founded uh, because we believe that uh, they should be more, more present of the of European Union knowledge in, in schools because um, uh, European Union is, some, is a topic that is not uh, very well known, how it works in the, uh, in, in, in the national politics and in, the, in national society. Uh, because it be, it seems that like Brass, it's just in Brussels something happening there, and uh, that we don't really be, uh, know what's happening there, and that's it's very far away, and we think that it doesn't affect our lives at all. Uh, so we believe that that should be tackled from the from the very beginning, from the education. That's why we start this campaign in collaboration with the Office of the European Parliament uh, in Spain, and uh, we have some we have volunteers uh, all the. All the people who go there are members from from Equipo Europa. We have a, a section in our board uh, just dedicated for that to contact with schools and to offer our um, let's say our services for uh, to send a volunteer and to teach uh, uh, to give one 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 hour conference to 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 the to the children. And uh, right now we we have uh, three thousand three hundred talks. Sorry in 130 schools and uh, they signed to, to commit and to, to participate in the, in the creation of, the, of a subject related to, to European Union. Um, uh, this, been, uh, this is one of the projects has, that has been, uh, has, it has been very well received uh, by schools. They, uh, most of them, they, they told us that, that uh, how they liked that and how the, even the kids enjoy this. And uh, for example, uh, in Navarra, the in last month there was a um, there was a, um, a, a, there was um, a prize uh, on an essay to kids, and the, the question was, uh, what, "What do you think about the, the European Union and how the European Union can can affect you, or can can improve your your life?" And among all the the children that participated, uh, the the first. Three, they are going to to receive um, uh, from from the Spanish member of the European Parliament a uh, trip to Brussels, and uh, so this is how uh, Keep Europa is trying to to introduce the European Union to the to, to the very first um, educational uh, levels in Spain. Uh, apart from the the university, that's that's where we move uh, basically. Uh, then uh, we participate uh, a lot and in the conference of the, the future of, of Europe that was uh, from December 2020 to May 2021. Uh, we had uh, 35 partners and, and we created different uh, different space and, and, um, and team works where we, where we could develop all these proposals and the, and they were they went sent to the to the European Commission. And as we can see in this in this picture, uh, even we 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 had the, the opportunity to go to the European Parliament and meet some uh, members of the European Parliament to to convey our um, our main uh, concerns. 
about ecological translation, uh, transition, rule of law, democracy, uh, digital transformation. Um, and we believe that that was also quite uh, quite interesting because in the in our way to make all these proposals, we got to talk with uh, researchers and with uh, very interesting people. Uh, so we could share this knowledge from the, our concerns as youth and also uh, with very valuable partners and, and even politicians, researchers, universities. So all the all those propos uh, proposals have a lot of background and a lot of uh, so solidity. So it was quite quite, quite interesting all this uh, all this process. So in the end, uh, we we made ninety five proposals and um, from uh, seven groups of uh, five people. So it was thirty five uh, youth. Um, then in uh, November uh, twenty twenty one, we made the first. Uh, a conference about the European democracy, who was uh, organized in Madrid in a uh, Circula de Bellas Artes, which, which is a very nice place and very beautiful and very historical place in, in Madrid. And uh, it was uh, broadcast on YouTube, and and it was even uh, the some uh, Spanish news agencies came to to the to the event to to see what we were doing. There was uh, one one hundred uh, young adults uh, for panels, two workshops, and one debate, and uh, it was quite quite interesting because uh, despite it was as we can see with the, with the masks, as it was just after the pandemic, we got to gather uh, a lot of uh, young adults and we got to to talk and to discuss about uh, democratic issues in in Europe. Um, at this time, it was the, all the issues with the, all the restrictions and the and the pandemic and the back the pandemic measures. And all the um, the also the, all the, the the judicial problems with uh, Hungary and Poland. So we we talk and we debate about uh, about all that. So it was quite quite interesting. Um, then we have um, yeah, European actuality, that it's uh, about analyzing uh, all the events that is happening in the you know Europe, in the European Union. Um, so it's mainly all international current affairs. Uh, we we and now we made around eighty five analyses. And this is, uh, we mainly uh, analyze the, the events that has more noun and has more, more, uh, more name in the, in the European Union and that can affect youth uh, specifically. So we try to release them uh, every two weeks, every one month, depending on the, on the team that is working on that. But it's quite, quite interesting as well how, how we, we have like a team of editors who works on that uh, from really quite high, high quality and, and neutral uh, analysis. And um, then this is uh, one of my favorite projects. It's called the EU Youth Lab, um, that it was created two years ago. Uh, with the, in, the, the idea was to, to create uh, really high quality groups uh, with youth who could focus on a very concrete and very specific uh, uh, topic uh, among, the, among a big one, an abstract one. And uh, this was quite interesting because they got to to uh, to analyze a lot of different um, to read a lot uh, scientific uh, academic papers and also to talk with uh, we call advisors. Um, they were the 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 ones who were uh, who work were professors from university professors politicians. So we could uh, we could make some uh, a, a high quality proposal regarding different topics. The first one was recuperation and resilience mechanism. And the last year was mental health and was divided in uh, urbanism, public health, um, environment, and uh, education. So from all that, we could make uh, some proposals about that. Um, very good quality proposals because of all this, this work from month, uh, month work. Um, it was very, very interesting. Then uh, we have uh, Euroculture. That is, this is this project is trying to um, to announce the, the European Union values from the from the culture point of view, not not just like the politics and the and the scientific point of view. So uh, that's why mainly in uh, in the in social media we try to talk about some uh, some cultural aspects like music, cinema, and, and literature. Uh, we try to. Um, to gather all these uh, all these European values and how like Eurovision and other like gastronomy and these uh, these cultural uh, topics that can 
can make us a, a European identity, not just a national identity. So we made uh, 81 fun facts about uh, typical food, typical tradition, typical dances, and also two uh, touristic guides about uh, from, from uh, different countries. Um, so this was basically for getting a bit outside of, of politics, because sometimes as our association is mainly composed by international relations student, law student, political science. Uh, we try to, to get out of all that uh, academic world. Then uh, we made uh, three summer courses until now. Um, and this is uh, this is also in uh, it, it's intended to to gather a, a lot of people from different points of, uh, of Spain because it's when we have a vacation so we can travel and we can meet better. Um, and um, this year is going to be one in July at the end of July and one at the end of of August as well. And it's the, which is one main topic. And then we have some different workshops and, and we bring some different, uh, very interesting uh, people and politicians. Uh, last year, the former prime minister, sorry, the former foreign affairs minister of Spain came to, to our summer course to talk about the, the European Union and the, the, foreign, the foreign affairs um, office. Um, uh, the first one was about the present and future of the European institutions. Uh, the second one was the, about the current state and future prospects. This is, we have to bring in mind that the European Union, uh, sorry, that Equipo Europa was born just right before the pandemic. So most, more, most of our uh, projects and the topics which is are based on that as the resilience uh, fund. And then lastly, uh, international cooperations in the, in the European Union. Uh, where we discussed about how the European Union is is like, trying to connect with uh, other continents and other other regions like the the Sahel and the sub-Saharan region in in Africa or the Southeast Asia in uh, in in Asia. And then, of course, we try to to commit with uh, with society in a more direct way, not just in this in the the political uh, way or in the in the decision making process way. We try to 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 see, like to 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 show that um, we uh, we also want to change uh, society from our main our, our hands. That it, we don't we don't have to uh, talk to the politicians and for um, oblige them or pre put pressure to them for uh, for them to change uh, our our uh, our welfare state. So that's why we've done some uh, two collections, mainly during Christmas, uh, in different parts of uh, of Spain. Then uh, we made another Christmas of solidarity uh, in in 2020 uh, to because of the pandemic, the effects of the, on the pandemic, and because of the Canary Islands. I don't know if you remember that in the, in the Canary Islands there was this uh, volcano that uh, that affected all, to thousands of people in in the Canary in the Canary Islands. And uh, a couple of months ago in Madrid. We made a, a, an event about the, the Ukrainian war, and uh, with the money that we got from from that event and from the, the what people wanted to collaborate, uh, we dedicated that money to the uh, Association for Ukraine um, for for helping for sending humanitarian aid to to Ukraine. So this is how we try to also like schools. We try to to make an equilibrium between the to be in society to really know what, what is going on and what's the reality about. But also how to know the the most uh, technical knowledge about politics and about uh, about um, what's going on in the European Union. Then, lastly, as uh, just as we, uh, so for you to see how is a Hebrew uh, composed, then we have the Junta Directiva, that is the the national board with the president and different uh, we call uh, vocales. It could be like the ministers. Um, uh, then we have uh, some some of them that is they are controlled on of different projects specifically because as we think as you've seen there's some projects to who dedicate full time with you you can stay in different at the same time and then uh, we have um, we have the the portavocias that are the regional boards uh, with same with similar similar structure. And then the delegations who are the members, um, who are the, the volunteers and the ones participating on, in all our activities. So thank you so much. I hope you, you enjoyed.
and I hope you like the Kipuropa activities. And here is the, this is the email of uh, Madrid, if you want you to contact with us for wherever you need. And our social media is if you want to check also the, the activities we do there and we did with different projects. So I hope you like them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruben. Uh, it was a very interesting presentation. I, I truly believe that uh, your organization is really, really interesting, especially since funded in uh, 2019. And you managed to grow quite impressively, especially two years or three the, but during the pandemic. It's, uh, what were the main challenges? Uh, from the conception of the idea to found this, this organization to, to get you with how many, uh, somewhere close to 4,000 members and so many actions throughout uh, Spain. What were the main challenges when you got started? Well, in the beginning, for sure, the pandemic. We had to, to our all our activities we had to to do it was uh, online. So we met a lot of conferences about. Uh, also, it was good and bad at the same time because as it was online, we could contact with very high high quality and high profiles uh, among the the politics and among the scientific uh, background. Um, and then uh, I would say that after the pandemic, as all the youth wanted to, to take part in, in, in politics and in society because of how uh, what we lead, what we saw, and how the pandemics changed us in some, some way. So I think that that was uh, the, um, the, the main point for, for to grow that much. And, and also, as, uh, we tried to, to be different of other European associations uh, for being made uh, for, the, for the youth by the youth. Um, so we wanted to to, to show how uh, like maybe the the, the, the all, also, I think also, uh, always the the, best, the worst part is to to make to be uh, reliable because if we talk if we if we try to talk to, with an institution um, you have to offer something valuable if not they're going to consider us kids uh, so as we participate with the with the uh, European Parliament office in in Madrid they started to to see us as a as a value as a value asset. And then, as we participated in different different projects, and we offer our our knowledge and our services of the of uh, uh, voice of the of youth participation, it was um, the beginning. It was hard, but in the same time, everything happened very quick, and we we grew we grew very quick and in different points of Spain. So it was quite beautiful, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, the range of your activities and projects is. It's impressive. I mean, it's not easy to, to build the capacity in such a short time to run all those different kinds of projects from conferences and courses to, to environmental activities and uh, the charity activities. I am well aware that it is not an easy thing to have the capacity to do at such a short period. Uh, we can proceed. If you have any questions in the chat, uh, you can raise your hand, you can open your microphones. I have a question and I want to ask you to you two, uh, as an individuals, how did you get started in, in this activism? Uh, did you find it difficult to get involved or whatever? Want to answer your camera first? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, for me, uh, I must say that it was really hard, also because I've been part of some organizations since I was a teenager, but I didn't kind of find my way to do that. And it was not until I was a part of Equipo Europa, which I kind of found totally random. So one day that I was uh, scrolling through LinkedIn, it just popped on my uh, page and I became a member. But once I was part of Equipo Europa, I think because it is a network of uh, young people like me, I think it was easier because it's easier to connect or to do things when you are in a, in a space that you know that there are people like you uh, mm -hmm. or where you have um, maybe the same interests or, or things like that. And also because as Equipo Europa has this large run, range of activities, 
there's like always something that you can do that you are interested in. Like I'm more interested in sustainability. So I get to do things regarding that aspect. So I think, yeah, it was easy once I was in a youth organization. I think that's really important being part of a youth organization. Mm -hmm. And you, Ruben? Yeah, in, in my case, uh, in the beginning, uh, I've been in some uh, associations in my, in my university. Uh, but it is true that it wasn't as, let's say, professional or like the people who was there, it wasn't, they wasn't, they wasn't as passionate. Uh, I think maybe because of the scope. When we, when I got to to Keep Europa, uh, you could see how the, the vision of activities and projects that we could do, it was uh, like the potentiality. It was society as as a, as a whole and the country as a whole. Doing university, it could it was more reduced. Uh, still very nice. I learned a lot, but uh, I like Keep Europa just because of that. Also, uh, you could find people from very different backgrounds there in, in, in Equip Europa, different cities, different um, uh, different universities and, and education. So I think that the main challenge is, is that is to, to connect firstly and to know what can I do here with this, uh, to, let's say to use that association for, for uh, making, for, uh, trying to project your own values and your own, um, what you want to do in, in society. But uh, when you join these kind of organizations, you find people like you, people that want that it's, it's okay with by uh, spending hours and hours of work, free work, because we are volunteers, mm -hmm. because we love it, because we truly believe on what we, on what we do. So that could be the, the first barrier. But when you go through that barrier, everything is easier, way, way easier. And you always find the same people in the same uh, same spaces so that's also kind of beautiful because you start for just uh, how to how do you want to change society and then you you make friends and you make truly friends that share the same values and the same the same vision mm -hmm. okay. um, before i continue is there a question in the chat no okay what about uh, your, your experience is being part now being part of the civil society and especially as a youth organization that brings new ideas and new concepts and the way things work the established way and sometimes get a little bit too traditional uh, what's your experience as members of the civil society about the the dialogue that can happen at the societal level etc how how do you believe uh, civil society could be empowered and strengthened even more? Too many questions, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, about uh, civil society, I think that uh, there's a lot of different civil society because we can see how we are way different than other big organizations that even have the salaries and have a lot of experience. They are more like inst institutionalized, and then and us because we are we are uh, youth people that our um, our career, let's say, in Equip Europa is not that uh, not that the extent because it's more like a like student or a or a young adult uh, thing because the, our we can stay in Equip Europa until we are thirty, uh, not after. Um, so I would say that in that case we are a bit different and maybe a bit volatile. But in the same time, we know we it's good because we adapt to to new realities and new new topics. Um, and I'd say I would say that um, it's uh, it's very nice to to collaborate with different associations to make great things and to because as we are just uh, youth and European, but we can we can uh, walk aside with uh, migration, with uh, with housing problems, with um, with uh, universities uh, all, from all this collaboration they has been very nice for example uh, the what Jokandra said about uh, a tree for Europe uh, we talk with town halls but also with um, with universities so all this collaboration between civil society is very fruitful and it's very very nice um, and I would say that it's difficult to maybe uh, to make a place for you and to make a, a name then when when you when you make that name by with your work and your your projects and how you try to show to the society then it's easier it's easier to to get contact by them uh, by, by by them by all the civil society members and then it's like a, a snowball so yeah okay um, 
So let me see. Uh, okay, with the other associations and civil society members. What about um, your relationship with uh, institution, formal institution, and EU institutions, national institutions? How? Not how easy. What the, do you believe? Are are you satisfied? from the way you are treated as a youth organization and as an organization in general. Do you believe, that, based on your experience, if there are other mechanisms and procedures that could uh, help the inclusion of civil society in several processes? Um... I, I would say that we've been surprisingly uh, for me because I, uh, from a just a citizen I, I, I thought that this would be uh, harder but from my experience and from the keyboard of experience uh, to get in touch with uh, institutions it was quite easier uh, because they, they tried to mainly the, the European uh, institutions like the, the European Parliament office in, in Spain they've always treated that very well and they offer us the all the spaces and support the, the support that we wanted to um, and also uh, the uh, me uh, national members uh, institutions like embassies we had very good relation with the either the, the French and the German uh, institution because they are very interested in knowing uh, our opinion and um, they've invited us to, to a lot of events to participate uh, as, as viewers but also to, to participate in in that um also when we try to speak to other institutions like national institutions i think mainly and also uh, civil society we've been treated very well when we also offer and we made this kind of exchange for win-win exchanges um but um i think that from the outside it can be it could it could sound very hard of course if you're trying to talk with the minister it's going to be very hard or even impossible but uh but for most of the institutions it's been very easy and a very uh, very easy to talk and very easy to organize something with more or less problems because of protocol and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, I think that I think I answered the question. Yeah, yeah, and that's good to hear that actually they are they are easy to cooperate on several mm -hmm. things because we do need the, the backing of authorities and uh, national institutions of course and they should have uh, the support um okay any questions uh, from uh, the participants in the chat or i will just keep going okay um what about the the I'm, I'm trying to ask questions that I know that interest the chat, but they are too embarrassed to ask probably. Uh, what about uh, the skills, soft skills, professional skills that in practice you end up needing and you end up developing through because you are a youth organization, you, you develop your skills at the same time it's not only having what what would you uh, advise younger people here to to develop and how should they approach this this field uh well i'd like to answer this one um you um, ask about the soft skills or the different skills that people should develop uh, in these uh, youth organizations? Well, I think that mainly one of them is knowing how to work with different people with different perspectives. But I also think uh, it's a really nice way and a really uh, easy way to develop skills that you need for your life or that you need in the future for your work life. Because in my example, uh, when I was a teenager and when I was a kid, I was really shy and I was really timid. And now that I, I have to talk with um, majors or I have to talk with institutions or uh, university because I have to attend some meetings or things like that, 
I've, uh, I got to learn how to calm myself and how to be more approachable and also more open-minded to different um, perspectives. And I think uh, being part of uh, this organization has helped me a lot. But I think that if you don't have those skills, you will end up de develop, uh, de um, having them uh, because it's things that you have to learn to be able to develop the different activities. So if you don't have them, you will probably uh, Um, it is um, uh, so sometimes it can at the, uh, a first glance it can look like it's kind of hard because you see people are really uh, good at speaking at public speaking or you see people that don't have any kind of problem and you and ask yourself how you can do that but I think that with all the experience we get uh, from all of the activities we do, uh, is a really good way to get and um, uh, to get those skills that you are talking about. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carmen, do you have any questions to, to ask? No. Does anyone have any question? I think that but, uh, um, we have one question in chat. Do yeah. you cooperate with any organizations based in Greece? Because I would be interested in similar actions. I feel like your organization is very versatile. Um, well, up to now, uh, we we just have in Spain and then we one delegation, international, one international delegation, but not yet. We, uh, because we are very, uh, we are we are very young, but we are trying to to contact with uh, different associations abroad, uh, for make uh, to make these kind of uh, exchanges. Uh, which, as, as I've said, uh, it's not it's not easy. Of course, it gets a lot of job and a lot of uh, emails and contacts uh, to make. But um, if we talk with with institutions, they can be more than eager to to help us. So we are looking for uh, organizations and institutions, youth organizations, uh, uh, mainly if they are uh, pro-European uh, as us, um, to, to collaborate and to make these kind of exchanges because we believe they are very interesting. Uh, we've been trying to, to, uh, to talk with uh, one association, uh, a couple of, of, of associations in Germany, but, uh, but it would be, it would be uh, amazing to, to, to talk with one in, in Greece. But not yet, <laughs> not yet. Yes. Uh, and how people can join your organization? Uh, we have, uh, depending on uh, which delegation you want to do, you want to be to be part um, on in. Um, do we have a form? Uh, I can I can leave the um, our web page is. Mm -hmm. uh, I can leave it here. Um, then you just have you just put your your phone number and and where do you live if if it's Madrid Barcelona or uh, wherever, um, and then you can see all the activities all the events all the like everything we do we have an intranet when we upload also uh, opportunities like uh, job opportunities internship opportunities for example like last week uh, Equipo Europa put in, in uh, uploading the opportunities uh, from the ten internships in the Green Party in the in the European Parliament um, ah you can just um, so uh, our, I, I would I would say that uh, the web page is very useful and very nice, also very well done. Um, there's more information about what we do. It's in, in Spanish. That's the the, the bad bad thing. Uh, but um, but it's quite interesting. And the what the Kipuro and what the intranet can offer is very very wide. And and also how to to be a member of of Kipuro. But do you need to be in, in Spain for now? I mean, and now do you need to be in Spain? OK, thank you. And I have another question. I, I know that it's very easy, but I think it's important to think about it. And it is, what is the importance of youth participation? What do you think, guys? Um, I would say that it's very, very important because there's a lot of topics like society change a lot and mainly in these last decades uh that uh, the velocity on the, the rapidness on how it uh it, it grows it's incredible and there's some topics that uh there's this generational gap 
uh, like environment, new new technologies, or um, different topics that they are more present or the mental health is very recently, very recent, and this is uh, present in the in youth. So if we don't if we don't raise our voices and um, on all these problems, and we don't need to be all those fifty year old politicians, sixty year old politicians to change that because there's like like climate change that we don't have that time for for making for making that. So if we start being uh, doing youth participation when we are uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, then with all that experience that we gain and all that pressure, and if we show our, our ourselves as a valid speaker and as a valid player in, in society, uh, then the changes could be could go faster and more, more efficient and more effective. And we could also set some of our uh, main concerns in the in the political agenda. And that's how also you can see that if, if the politician wants to, in the election framework, if we if they want us to vote them, they, they need to work on our concerns and our problems. If not, uh, uh, there's going to be even a, a higher gap and it's going to be more conflict. Um, but of course, we try to, to, to tackle all these problems through, through negotiation, through collaboration and through, through um, a partnership mainly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does anyone has any other question? You can um, unmute yourself and say whatever you want or write in the chat or whatever. Okay, until they leave. Oh. Uh, my question is, what about, okay, you told us about uh, the delegation in other countries, etc., to the organization group. What other kind of activities or projects, or I don't know what, uh, would you like to to organize in the future? What What's your plans for the future as an association? Your ambition, I don't know. Maybe mm. you, you've thought of something that uh, it's too soon for you to do. You want to grow even more to do this kind of question well uh right now we are working on the the because from june is going to be the, the 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 presidency of the european union for spain so we are working on on that so we are we're trying to to put our concerns with the uh, spanish authorities uh regarding all these this topic so that's our like short medium term uh, uh ambition to be part of that uh presidency because it's a very uh, unique opportunity and then uh, also uh, I could say that as next year is going to be the, the European Parliament then we can make a whole cycle and we can analyze what we've done we've achieved on all this cycle and then try to what to change and, and what to what to do and personally I would love to do all these kind of exchange uh, of, of students uh, in Europe because we are We've done some some trips to to Brussels and to Strasbourg, but we'd like to connect outside the the Brussels bubble, let's say, and we'd like to make all these exchanges in uh, with civil society and with uh, with uh, youth associations in other countries, um, uh, and get them involved in that. Not just as a, as a let's say like a short Erasmus, but as if they if. There's a, a European association that come to, to Spain, to Madrid, for example. We would take them to school, so they could they could convey how uh, like the, the the two groups, the Spanish and the and the other nationality, to show the kids how uh, how is Europe about and what, uh, the the good things about Europe, uh, like of this this kind of exchange, and also uh, to let them be in touch with other civil society and with other uh, national reality and the other way around. Uh, so we can make uh, uh, this European identity, not just uh, not just in in Brussels or not not just in an institution level, but also from a civil society level. Yeah, that's nice. Is there any other question in the chat, or open your microphone and ask away? No. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute. 
that was a personal message. Uh, so are we are we have anything else to ask what would interest the the shy members of our program? If there are no other questions, I think we can conclude this meeting. No reason to yeah. keep uh, Ruben and Yokandra. <laughs> mm. uh, so thank you very much for being here today. Uh, yes. We wish you the best with your organization. It's very interesting and ambitious, and it should be. And for the rest of us, uh, we'll go on a break for about 15 minutes. Mm. Thank you, Lenny. Okay. So thank you very much. So thank, thank you, all. you guys. And you know our, our social media. If you want to to contact us and to to ask anything, you're more than welcome. And um, thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Uh, so the rest of us, we are going for a break. Let's say. So seven ten uh, or six ten uh, depends on the country or fifteen. Okay. Uh, let's okay, say so in seven, seventeen ten? minutes. In seventeen minutes, we can be back. Okay. Okay, in fifteen minutes or in the in ten minutes. In fifteen. Seventeen. Okay, yeah. in fifteen minutes. Okay, yeah. so see you in a while. So see you in a while.